Greetings to all the students. Uh, welcome to biology and chemistry lessons. Uh, these videos are made for the purpose of your self-study. Biology and uh, chemistry lessons will be uploaded in the YouTube channel. So it will help you, those who are remote students, those who do not have any teacher at home. These students, they can do self-study by seeing these videos. Also, they will be able to make their own notes because the PowerPoint slides are there. So our today's topic is respiration, which is a very common topic. It, it has been taught since class 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Cambridge students at XLIG, CSE students, all the students, they have got this chapter in common. So let's start with the respiration. So what is respiration? Respiration is a chemical reaction. Okay, respiration is a chemical reaction. Where it is taking place? It is taking place in all the cells of the living organisms. There is no such living organisms in which inside the cells respiration is not taking place. And those in which the cells do not conduct respiration, they are dead. They are non-living things. So respiration is a chemical reaction. We should not misunderstand that respiration and breathing are the two same processes. Breathing is just the circulation of air in your lungs. You are breathing in air and you are breathing out stale air. Whereas respiration is a chemical reaction in which oxygen goes to your cells, glucose goes to your cells. How? Your blood picks up oxygen from the lungs. Your blood picks up glucose from your intestine. And during the blood circulation, this blood drops the glucose and oxygen to each and every cell of your body and inside the cell's mitochondria in our cells there is a particular organelle you can see here on the screen there is a red color organelle there are hundreds of them in our living cells so these organelles are actually uh, conducting this respiration respiration is taking place particularly in this mitochondria so the more active the cell is, like your muscle cells, your liver cells, the, the more number of mitochondria they will have. So what happens that this glucose and oxygen gets inside the mitochondria and they chemically combine together. So when they chemically combine together, what do they produce? Carbon dioxide, water and energy. Carbon dioxide and water are the waste products of the respiration, whereas this energy remain stored in our mitochondria. So this is called cellular respiration or you can also call this aerobic respiration because oxygen is present here. So when oxygen is there, the respiration, this particular chemical reaction will be aerobic respiration. Is breathing and respiration same? No. Breathing is a physical process. Circulation of air is taking place in and out of your lungs, whereas respiration is a chemical reaction which is taking place in your cell's mitochondria. Okay? See the chemical reaction? Glucose and oxygen combine together and they produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay? So what are the waste products of respiration? The waste products of respiration are carbon dioxide and water. These are the two waste products of respiration. So they should not stay in your cells. They should not stay in your cells. So they will be exhaled out. They will be exhaled out. So how they will be exhaled out of the, uh, I'm sorry, not exhaled out. They will be diffusing out of your cells. Okay, they will be diffusing out of the cells. So you can see carbon dioxide and water, water are the waste products of respiration. So they diffuse out. You must know, if you do not know, very soon I will be making uh, the videos of osmosis diffusion and active transport. So diffusion is the process in which the particles move. The molecules move from high to low concentration area. The particles where they are more, they will move towards the, the area uh, where they are less. So the carbon dioxide and water molecules that diffuse out of the cells in the blood, the blood will bring them back to our lungs and we exhale them. What happens to this energy? This energy remains in our cells. In which form? In the form of a chemical energy. 
the science student must know that there are various forms of energy light energy heat energy nuclear energy so chemical energy so this particular energy which is there in our cells in the form of a chemical which is called atp adenosine triphosphate so our mitochondria they have atp but it's a very energy high energy level compound so energy is released from this atp this atp will be broken down into adp and one phosphate group will be separated adenosine triphosphate will be broken down into adenosine diphosphate one phosphate group will be separated and energy will be released okay so this is how you are getting energy okay what are the uses of energy we are growing height is increasing weight is increasing hairs are growing nails are growing skin is growing muscles are growing bones are growing so they all need energy physical activities running jogging walking uh, you know even when you are sleeping you need energy why because your brain is working your lungs are taking in and out oxygen air uh, your heart is pumping the blood your kidneys are filtering the blood so they all need energy so from where the energy is coming atp is broken down into adp and giving you energy metabolism chemical reactions are taking place in our cells so these chemical reactions need energy keeping the body temperature constant our body temperature under normal circumstances is always constant is always constant unless and until you have a fever how you are keeping your body temperature constant you need energy to keep your body temperature constant so that energy will be supplied from the atp organ functioning like your just i said lungs are working uh, heart is working kidneys are functioning blood is circulating so these all need energy okay so there is another type of respiration which is taking place in all the mammals including human beings and that is called anaerobic respiration like the name is obvious aerobic with oxygen anaerobic without oxygen is it possible that uh, we can respire our cells can respire without oxygen yes it is possible because it's a chemical reaction we cannot breathe without air we cannot breathe without oxygen but we can respire the chemical reaction in our cells can take place without oxygen so when you are actively uh, you know working running cycling jogging okay uh, so your muscles need lots of energy so from where this energy will be available when lots of oxygen and glucose reach to your cells they combine rapidly and they give you energy but the way you are working the way you are playing swimming or cycling that much oxygen you cannot instantly send to your muscles so what your muscles will do they won't wait they will not wait that when oxygen will come then the chemical reaction will happen and then they will provide you with energy no they are very sincere instantly they have to give you the the backup so how they will give you the backup glucose will be broken down without oxygen glucose is not going to wait without oxygen this glucose will be broken down but now since oxygen is absent a different type of the waste product will be produced and you can see here lactic acid will be produced along with energy but this energy is comparatively way to lesser then in the aerobic respiration so this lactic acid which is produced over here is actually the waste product of anaerobic respiration and it is stored in our cells and it gives us trouble how it gives us trouble you must have noticed that after a long time when you play when you clean your home or when you do a heavy exercise your muscles your hands and leg legs your back start aching you feel a painful you have a painful sensation in your body you know the reason why lactic acid is produced your cells were respiring anaerobically and lactic acid is now deposited this waste product inside your cells is give you painful sensation see what this lactic acid does to our cells so this lactic acid first of all it is an acid so it will lower down your ph your cells ph ph is a value uh which is actually the measure of acids and alkalis so for acids the ph is in between 1 to 6 and for alkalis it is in between 8 to 14 so the ph of our cells is usually a neutral or normal ph which is which is 
and at this pH the enzymes are properly working the chemical reactions are happening but when lactic acid is formed then and there the cells pH start decreasing so the first thing which will be affected is your enzymes if you remember enzymes are the biological catalyst they speed up the chemical reaction so your your pH will decrease okay the cells pH will decrease and first of all your enzymes will become affected so your enzymes will become affected your chemical reactions will slow down when your chemical reactions will slow down there will be less energy generated in your cells in your body and this is the reason that why you feel tired you cannot run you cannot jog you cannot cycle forever why because enough lactic acid is deposited in your cells and it is it's, it's hampering the chemical reactions taking place in your cells it is disturbing your enzymes and you are not getting enough energy because chemical reactions are being slowed down so you are getting tired you have muscular cramp what will happen to this lactic acid this lactic acid will be broken down when you will take extra amount of oxygen so when you will finish your exercise or even during the exercise also you must have noticed one thing that you start you know your breathing rate increases you start panting you know the reason why you are panting you are trying to send extra oxygen to your muscles to break down the lactic acid so this extra oxygen which you are trying to send to your muscles by panting is actually called oxygen debt okay remember what is oxygen debt it is the extra amount of oxygen needed to break down the lactic acid which is the waste product of anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration takes place even some other organisms also the best example is yeast bacteria yeast microscopic organisms they can respire anaerobically so how this yeast respire anaerobically uh, yeast breaks down you have to provide yeast with glucose like it can be the flour which we use for baking so when we bake what we do we add yeast in the flour we make a dough we wrap the dough with something we cover the dough with a towel or with a polythene bag we want to cut off actually the supply of oxygen because we want yeast to breathe anaerobically uh and then we are going to you know keep it at a warm place the dough is kept at a warm place the reason is we want to provide optimum temperature for the enzyme activity of the yeast why because we usually where do we keep yeast in our home in the refrigerator so when you will keep yeast in the refrigerator all the enzymes of the yeast will become deactivated as if the yeast is sleeping so you have to wake up the yeast how you will wake up the yeast you will keep it at a warm place all the enzymes will become active and yeast wake up and yeast is start breaking down the glucose which is there in the uh, flour uh, in into alcohol carbon dioxide and energy so anaerobic respiration particularly is given a specific name in case of yeast and that is called fermentation remember fermentation is nothing but anaerobic respiration in the microorganisms so you can see that their waste product their waste product is different than our waste product so what is the waste product in case of fermentation in case of anaerobic respiration in yeast alcohol and carbon dioxide remember recall what is the waste product in case of the anaerobic respiration in case of human beings or other mammals lactic acid so alcohol and carbon dioxide do it is the waste product but we are making use of it all right what will happen to this energy what will happen to this energy this energy is actually for yeast yeast will continue its life with the help of this energy so this carbon dioxide and alcohol becomes the you know it's the waste product and when you are baking the dough alcohol evaporates alcohol even evaporates at a very low temperature so you are baking it at a high temperature so it evaporates carbon dioxide escapes and when carbon dioxide escapes out of the dough it makes the dough soft fluffy have you ever noticed one thing on the surfaces of the breads and the buns there are tiny pores 
there are tiny holes why these holes are there what are these holes for it is actually the carbon dioxide has escaped and it made tiny holes and when carbon dioxide escaped the whole dough has become soft and fluffy okay this is called fermentation and yeast is used uh, for this reason in uh, baking and wine making so what are the conditions you have to remember the conditions sometimes in novel o level exam they ask what are the conditions necessary for fermentation to take place oxygen must not be there glucose you have to supply glucose to the yeast and you have to provide optimum temperature to wake up the yeast to make the yeast enzymes activate it okay commercial uses of yeast as i have just said uh, these actually commercial uses of yeast class 6 7 children uh, it will be helpful for them because in lower classes we usually teach the children how it is used in baking and how it is used in wine making and even the cambridge students also they will be needing this thing when will they will be doing the chapter of genetic engineer making use of the microorganisms in genetic engineering so wine making and breaking well, uh, baking as i have just said that yeast is added to the flour and you make a dough and you cover the dough you cut off the supply of oxygen you keep it at a warm place and then you bake it alcohol evaporates <clears throat> carbon dioxide escapes yeast at a high temperature is killed what is left behind just the soft and fluffy dough wine making yeast is added to the sugary fruits yeast is kept in air tight container so that oxygen cannot reach there then yeast break down the glucose which is there in the fruits into alcohol and carbon dioxide and that is the drink actually okay now the differences in between aerobic and anaerobic respiration can you think can you suggest some of the differences okay let me tell you aerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen anaerobic respiration takes place sorry aerobic respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen okay uh, in aerobic respiration large amount of energy is released whereas in anaerobic respiration a very small amount of energy is released aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria of the cells anaerobic respiration takes place in the cell cytoplasm the waste product of aerobic respirations are aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide and water whereas in case of anaerobic respiration the waste products are the uh, lactic acid and in case of yeast alcohol and carbon dioxide so here i made some basic questions if you can read these questions and try to answer you can pause the video read these questions make your own answers okay you will get all the answers in the previous slide see so that's all children for today i hope you will like the video bye